Okay, so hello everyone. So today I'm gonna try to try to explain the chapter 26, which is the iteration. So to uh actually in this chapter uh deal with a kind of a three, I would say like a three major task, like a like a, how we can iterate in the some of the within the data database and then and then when we deal with the uh, iterating the process for the when we have a multiple database, and also when we produce the some kind of a output, how we can uh deal with the, those multiple output as a save or export or import kind of things. So first of all is uh, I'm gonna try to uh explain about the some of the prerequisites about the. Uh, modifying the multiple column. So in here, as you can see here, if we, for example, if, uh, for example, we we, uh, have a uh, this kind of a uh, create the t create create the table like uh, some of the normal dis random normal distribution kind of kind of file like a set of the numbers, and then uh, if we have this one, maybe we will might have a. Uh, a, B, C, D as a column, and then uh, we might have a uh, 10, 10 rows with a whole different kind of uh, numbers. And then maybe we can say that try to summarize about the each row data. And then for example, if we wanna try to do the median value for the each column, uh, each column, Maybe we might think about this kind of process, like a summarize and then a try to assign the A, B, C, D, and then a try to get the median value for median function. And then we will have, a, normally we will have a, this kind of result with a, N is a just kind of a number of, a, number of our data set, which is the 10, right? But this is a kind of a, a little bit tedious task because maybe if we have a, not only four columns, Maybe if we have a hundred or a thousand columns to do the same process, we cannot write about this one maybe hundred times or, or a thousand times. That's a very, very long piece of code. We don't want to do that, right? So the so one is the very brief thing that we have to do is we have to try to think of like how we can iterate in this kind of a simple process. One of the functions we can use is what is called the across function. That means when we have this, uh, uh when we have uh, this summarize, and then within the summarize, we have to write in the across function, and then the first argument is uh, we just uh, try to set set the column to the a to b like uh, by name, right, and then. And then next argument is uh, we just uh, set up the function for for uh, to be applied to the each column. That's the that's the how you can do for the uh for the iteration process, right? And then based on that, you will see the same result that we had had the previous code like this. So compare these two code. Actually, the latter one is the much simple kind of approaches, right? So that's yeah. the thing. And then, hold on, let me try to... Uh, there's a... Okay, screen share is a stop, so I don't know why that things happen. Well, just wait for a second. Okay. And 
Okay, there you go. So now you can see clearly, right? So compare compare previous one and the later one. Later one is a much simple kind of approaches. And then the other thing we also wanted to do is because right now we actually using the this kind of a column. And then maybe we can also try to apply the cost column by designating the selecting the some specific column by using the dot cars kind of function. So how we can do here is like a, for example, if we have a, this kind of example and then with the group, with a sample, and then in this case, we will have a uh we will have a group column A B C D in this case, right? And then uh maybe group group gonna be the sign randomly, maybe with the 10. Uh, 10 rows, right? And then we can say is by using the summarize group by, try to do the group by function. And then across the everything in the median means we're gonna try to calculate the median for the each ABCD column by the group like this. That's the how we can iterating those kind of uh, process by using the across function, but the thing is uh, by using the group kind of function. And also we can combine with uh, some of the where kind of uh, kind of function to to select the column, like uh, where is the numeric is the just the select the old numeric column or string column or date column, etc. So if we can using these kind of this kind of approaches, right? And then we can try to do the calling the multiple functions in this case. So maybe if we can try to set up the, this kind of a uh, NA, uh, R norm NA function, like uh, N is NA and then mean and standard deviation is a preset. And then try to do the sample for these kind of things. And then when we create the, this random table with the uh, with the one five is the num uh, the total number of rows, and then the one means that uh, one row out of the five gonna be the NA fun uh, NA value, okay? So that's the how we can do, it. and then a C gonna be C has the two NA value, and then a D gonna be the no NA values. So if that's the case, and then when we try to simply try to do the cross function and do the mean, maybe of course, a, B, column A, B, C has the NA function, so we don't calculate in those medium function because uh, it, it's gonna be produced the NA, right? So maybe if we can try to do the this NA remove two to calculate the median, that's gonna be much more helpful to calculate the median value in this case. So to do that, when we try to do the across function and then when we try to define the this function as a second argument, we can just divide our function like this and then x and then median x and then any rn gonna be the true. And then we can try to calculate in the median uh, without, without including the that NA value, okay? And then, and then it also says about the this function instead of the function x, we can actually uh, simply type of, of the this. Uh, I think that this is the backslash, right? The the backslash function dot x. Actually, this one is actually replacement for the function. And then and then we can just uh, type in as it is uh, the same thing. And then uh, it can be do the same job to the uh, as the previous uh, paper uh, as the previous one, and then and then also we can try to do the this one kind of a manually, like uh, keep keep designating this kind of a column name in it. But the thing is the the previous one like uh, this kind of code gonna be the much uh, always, always give to the same result but much simpler kind of a coding process. And then, 
And then now we also try to try to counting this kind of um kind of process like uh, when we calculate the median at the same time we also try to counting the number of missing value for the each column to do that we also try to using the list function in here and then we calculate the median for the each column and also we can produce the number of missing value as a as a, another column for the each column uh, calculation and then and then when we try to run the this one and then we can get the, this missing at the missing value as a column at the same time okay and then the the next chapter next subsection is actually talk about is if we try to do the this median and n mass we you will find that the actually in front of the that median and number of miss value it only have a column name is just kind of a uh a, a glue like a like a catenated to in front of the that uh that variable name maybe we might thinking about the maybe changing the those column names when we try to get the table result to do that we want to try to do using the this kind of a dot names argument to insert so right here in the across function we First, we actually select the column, and then get the get the list of the depth function to the median and number of missing value for the each column, and then we can also say about the the name gonna be the function gonna be function name like a median or a number of miss gonna be the first, and then the the column name gonna be the second. So when you looking when you compare to the this result and this result you will see that based on the this kind of a name argument you can see that name order gonna be the changing a little bit right so that's the how you can change in the column name as you want okay and also maybe you can also say about the by using the correlates function maybe you can say about the if there is a we actually have a na na by uh, values in the each co each column. So in that case, maybe we can replace the that NA with the zero. In that case, we can use in the this chorus function, and then this all of the this NA function gonna be replaced with a zero, right? So that's the another thing we can do, and then also maybe we can also create a new column by using the this dot name kind of function, and then a number of col column, and then a na zero, and then that's the that's the how you how we can try to convert from this one to this one. So when you're looking at the, this na uh, na value locations, you can see that all of the, these things is the changing to the zero. Just kind of a I think that this kind of code is just kind of a make sure like uh, some of the debugging process of the just kind of make sure any value gonna be the changing correctly compared to the previous four columns and then uh, the the next four column and then uh, try to compare those two things just kind of a debugging kind of process for the data manipulation and then also we can try to think about the uh, by using the filtering function we can also uh, try to summarize in to this kind of uh, uh, data manipulation process. Like a, like a DF miss is the filtering and then if any, uh, any uh, A through the D and then is any function is in there, maybe we can just try to, uh, try to find out the each row in that case. Because when you're looking at the top, fourth row has does not have any NA value. So that means except for the that fourth column, we will have uh, these four four rows with the uh, NA uh, NA value uh, from the any one of the this column. Okay, that's the how we can also filter. And then uh, if all means maybe any is if Based on the this one, if any is the 
if all of the has the NA values, it actually has the true false, true function. And then if, in that case, is we cannot get the any result because every row has the NA value. Okay. That's the reason why for the if any and if all is the quite different. If any is the, any one of the column has the that value, if and any any car any one of the column has the true, it it just keeps it. But in if all means everything has to has to be true. Okay, so that's the we can we don't have any kind of result from the this this table. Okay, and then next one is the kind of a very useful function about the across function. Fun, uh, across in function. So actually this kind of a simple code like expand the date, date function is allows us to the, how we can do is the like, uh, when we looking at the, this database in the DF, and then we just uh, try to check the, if there is any column with the date, date type, type column. And then we can try to uh, uh, try to split those dates into the year is year and month and month and day and day, right? So if if in this case if we have a, this kind of a table like a uh, Amy and Bob with a uh, two thousand nine. August the third, and then uh, two thousand uh, two thousand ten, January sixteenth, for example, like this, and then these are the name, and these are the date, right? And then uh, if we using apply to the this expand the date function, as you can see here, um, uh, it actually try to try to separate the year and month and day as a separate column like this okay so my i think that this kind of a fun, simple function is a very useful especially when you have a time series data set and then i try to aggregate your data set based on the year or month or day kind of thing that might be the very useful function then you try or if you wanna if you have a very detailed big time series database. And then the first thing you have to do is uh, how you can aggregate the, those time series data. In that case, it is a very, this one gonna be the very useful code that allows you to date column into the year, month, day, kind of a, a, a split, splitting those information, date information into the year, day, a month, and day for the time series data sets, okay? And then, and then also we can try to using the this kind of uh, uh summary function like aggregate function as a as a barrier uh variable kind of that kind of functions like a function s as uh, mean x by uh by the uh by the uh carrot and then uh when we try to have a diamond data set in the group by the cut and then uh, based on the this summarized mean function that we just created, we can try to uh, uh, try to summarize mean of the all of the this this table based on the this uh cost status functions. Okay. And then and then also you can you can detonate it about the this summarized mean and then based on the this carrots and then uh, designating the, this number of uh, uh, selecting the column. Because a uh, across function actually called uh, two arguments about the one is the one is the grouping one and then the other one is the selected column. So I actually try to understand how those things works. But the thing is what this one does is the based on the this kind of a carrot, kind of a mean, and then a cut basis. And then uh, this one is how we can select in the column by using the across the function within the that summarized mean function. So 
that's the how I understand this function. But, but anyway, a curl function is uh, quite useful when you have a multiple column and then and then you have to do the same uh, same uh, process uh, you need to apply to the same calculation or same manipulation process to the those columns. Or maybe if you want some of the specific columns that you have to do the some manipulation, a cost function gonna be help you to the selecting the, those columns and then apply to the same process to get the result. So that's gonna be the very useful functions other than using the for roof. For roof is gonna be the very complicated if you wanted to do those kind of things. Okay, so I personally think that of course, once you get used to the, this of course function, maybe you don't have to worry about the, how you can devise the for loop to, to deal with the, some automation process for the data manipulation or some of the calculations. Okay. Do you have any questions so far? And for me, thank you. Ah, okay. Okay. And then the next one is uh, just kind of a, it actually says about the versus the pivot longer, but the thing is, I would say about the, it might be much more useful when you try to combine with a pivot longer or pivot wider function with the across function or those kind of uh, the across function that we done previously. So in here, we can say about the summarizing across the A and D and then a list of the mean and median values. Okay, so here is our result. And then, and then we can also compute the same value by using the people longer and then the summarizing. But this one is actually kind of a, uh, a wider kind of thing. And then the people longer actually has the vertical kind of things. And then when we try to do the pivot wider, we also have the same same result for those two, right? So, uh, actually, a curl function and pivot longer or pivot wider has a kind of a pretty pretty good and then a similar function and then similar work, but but the thing is, I personally prefer to the across function specifically because. Maybe a cross function gonna be allows us to the more uh simple way to 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 reorganizing the our data set compared to the people longer table because it's only slightly longer coding things compared to the across function that we have the, that we saw in the previous uh, in the previous sections so. I think that it's a kind of a depending on the how we how you are get used to the each functions, but the thing is, I'm not sure. So, uh, across function is also has the its own advantage about the selecting the column and then a more simpler code processing, and also, across function can be worked with uh, if you have a multiple functional process one or two embedded within the across function. And then the people longer and people wider is also the good function. It is more intuitive. And then, and then, but the thing is, I'm not sure people wider and people longer has the good at the, if you wanted to do the multiple function in it. So, but anyway, it in this one, in this chapter, I wanted to say is the people longer and people wider also has the pretty, the same functions as the across the function. That's the what I understand about, about this. Because it anyway, it produced the same kind of a table result. And then in here, uh it is also about the about the people longer and then try to everything function is the just kind of include the every column names to the group and value, and then a separation to the this little dot and then we can try to do the these kind of people long functions like uh, keep doing the same things and also we can have uh, this kind of group by grouping uh grouping the 
uh, this ABCD column and then we can also try to do the weighted mean kind of functions. Try when we try to do the same thing for the weighted mean kind of functions, like uh, in here, we have a value and weights. And then when we try to do the weight, weighted mean by using the value and weights, and then uh, we can try to summarize those weight mean by the group. And then that's the how we can do for the pivot longer function. It's gonna be the very useful compared to the cost function. And then any question? So now actually a cross function is just kind of a uh try to try to automate data processing when you have a when you have a one single data frame to to uh to deal with the uh to do the some of the data manipulation process. And then the next one is a kind of a reading the multiple files. So that means if we have a multiple files that we want to work with the same, same data processing task, in that, in that case, how we can do this? That's the, that's the what this chap, this section is about. Because in the previous, previously, by using the across function, across function is just kind of focusing on the when you have a single data frame, database, and then how you can manipulating that single database. But the, this chapter is the, if you have a multiple file and then a multiple data, data set, data frames, how you can deal with the, those multiple files, okay? So like, uh, like in this example, Maybe if you have uh, maybe four or maybe five or 10 or 100 kind of multiple file that you have to read on. Maybe you might thinking about the read by using the, if you have an Excel file by reading, by using the read Excel packages, and then you can try to read the each, fun, each file with a path and then designating the each file name like this manually, right? But like I said, if we have uh, maybe maybe 100 or 200 or 1,000 uh, different files, that might be the problem. Actually, in fact, this is uh, my problem too, because uh, when I'm working on the, uh, personally, when I'm working on the person, uh, my, my doctoral dissertation, I actually got a, got a business data set which has the, which has the 1,500 different file from the database. So at that time, I actually using the, some of the merging tool uh, from the Excel file. But the thing is, I did not know anything about the, these kind of approaches at that time. Maybe if I know, I have known this kind of process, maybe I might use this one, <laughs> okay? So how, how we can do this? Yeah, so like here, so we can actually think about the loading the this one is the manually. We can just uh, try to uh, low, uh, bind the low function or or maybe base R, maybe R bind function. If we, if each, assuming that each data set has the same structure, same column name, assuming that we can using the this bind the low or R bind the function to combine everything into one, right? That's what we can do. Or maybe if we have a 100 or 1000 file, maybe like here, listing file in the directory, like by using the list file, list files function, and then we can try to, uh, try to detonate in the this path and file name as a one vector file. And then uh, maybe I might say about the by using the for loop, I and length. Maybe this is the df in this case. Maybe df. And then maybe I can I can say about the df temp. And then maybe read csv. And then df i. I was I I I will try to using this kind of process to loading loading the this kind of file by using the for loop. 
this is how you can you might thinking about to loading the file man uh, to do that but based on the, my experience this one this writing the this kind of a photo code coding is that takes time and also it is also time also long time to learn this code because this one actually loading loading the data file one by one and then try to try to binding combining that that table into the one by one which is the very tedious task and then uh, even if you can using the for loop it still takes a lot of time but in here what you can do here is by using the uh web uh map map function and then a list rbind function this one gonna be give you the much simpler way to automating the this kind of a combining process. Okay, so how you can use this? If you have a this kind of a path and then a read Excel function, and then the path is the that vector is the conclude the path, and then for that using the that path, what that don't do is the read access. So reading the those file with the that path. Okay. And then you can say about the rental file and then uh, you can save all of the, these data set as a list. And then you can just call the list of the file one by one, like, uh, like this, like a double bracket and then one or two, et cetera, maybe 12. Okay. That's the how you can do. And then uh, when you're using the list bind function, using the dev files, okay, that actually allows to the combine all of the those files into the one single data frame. That's the one list bound. And then you can actually automate this one by using the this pipeline kind of a function uh, operator. And then you can actually automating this process just kind of a very, very brief line of code rather than using using the this kind of a for loop. Okay. Yeah. Maybe if I can know this in advance, maybe I'm happy to using this one. But <laughs> but anyway, I'm happy to know this thing right now. So maybe I'm gonna have a chance to the, do the same thing. Maybe I might looking at this chapter and then using this one. So that's the how you can do. But the problem in here is like when you're looking at the, this, uh, uh, this file, actually this file actually come, uh, say it as a, as a year as a name, right? But the thing is, when you try to do simply using the rbind function, you anyway, you can succeed into the combine all of the file, but the thing is, it is the no way to identify which year, right? Which year data set we wanna talk about in here. So in that case, we have to think about the, how we can try to grouping those data, even if we can combine all of the, those multiple files together, we still have to be uh, uh, differentiated or or thinking of uh, uh, identifying the which data set is the when based on the year, especially when you have the time series data set, that is a very important you have uh, those kind of a year information. So in this case, when we looking at the this set name functions and then the base name, you will see that all of the this uh Excel file actually say it as a as a year as a name by name, and then we can try to using the this set names, and then mapping the that is the kind of a lib functions, and then, and then you can see the those file name gonna be the each data set uh list part of the list names okay and then how you can combine the how you can try to 
adding the ear column when you try to combine the these kind of a multiple file. That is actually do the set name as a base name and then a mapping by mapping those things and then a read the Excel and then a list by name to names to the ear. In this case, like a set name, and then mutate to the dead ear as the dead parse number from the ear, like a like a like a based on the file name file name, we can actually those file name as a as a kind of a identifier for the, each file. That's the how you can try to uh you can do to the combined a uh, combined file. At the same time, you can also tell tell the differences from the uh, among the law about the where that record come from. Okay, from when or maybe from which file, as uh, in this case. So these are the very useful when you try to developing the some of the time series data data set while cleaning up the your time series data set if you have one. Okay, yeah, it's the same thing. Like, uh, you can also also saving as the directory file file name and then extension, and then and then you can also combine to the all of the this database. Uh, when you try to combine to the multiple file like this, that's the how you can you can do or one of the way you can do for the data manipulation when you have a multiple file. Mm, any questions? Okay, so next one is uh, maybe now we have a, we have a combine, uh, combine all the, all of the different files into the one, one data frame, database. Uh, table table type, and then now it's a uh, time for us to the uh, save our work. Like uh, when we try to do the all of the this process, and then uh, what we can do is uh, just kind of write CSV, and then we can just uh, say this one is a uh, one single file, right? Or maybe we can try to do the. Uh. Sometimes we can try to combine all of the these simple iteration into the one single uh line of the code, or maybe we can try to do the this kind of iteration is the one by one. So in this chapter, actually, many simple iteration means that there is actually two ways we can do about the uh they get the tidy data set. One is that you can just kind of a one step of the iteration with the complex functions in it. So that means within the that iteration, you can combine you can combine all of the all of the data tidying the data set process in it. Or maybe you can just uh, try to split into the one by one as a step, and then do the iteration by the one by one. Okay. Actually, in here, uh, author actually recommending about the the later, uh, later from uh the second option like uh doing the one by one iteration because the that is actually allows us to do the get the tracking the our error if we have any. Okay. That's the kind of process. So, so in this one, like uh, in the this one. The first one is just kind of a do the iteration at once, right? But in this one is a more like a step by step process. And then, uh, which one is the much better? The other actually recommend about the this one is the, the second option going to be the much better because we can actually getting fixed very quickly. When we have uh, when we when our go through the this line of the process, when there is an error, it actually come it actually generating the that error into the in that step, and then we can easily figure out the, what's wrong with the that step, and then I try to fix the that problem very quickly. 
rather than this one. Okay. That's the another thing we can do. And then three point uh three point seven is the heterogeneous data set, which means if we have a very, very different type of uh, multiple database, we need to combine. But the thing is that uh, each data set has a kind of a different structure or slightly different color name or or slightly different kind of data structure. How we can combine those things? That means that uh, first thing we have to do is that we have to think we have to try to figure out the what kind of a data column name and type and then the missing value they have by using the this function like a column name is the name and type is the we can by using the that vector packages we can try to figure out the type and then also by using the map integer functions we can also sum of the number of NA values in that each functions. And then we can try to uh try to combine to the this one by using the selecting the no missing values and then a list arbine to based on the file name and then try to pivot wider to to do the uh do the table column by the one by one. And then we can try to figure out the what kind of a uh, 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 possible color we can combine for the across to the each file. And then by using the map functions, we can try to combine all of the, those Excel file and then a list bind from uh list R bind or bind low uh, bind low functions. We can try to combine these things after checking out to the what kind of data types and the data columns we can combine across the older all the data files. And then what's the handling failure means is uh, by using the possibly functions, if there is the sum of the file does not have a does not successfully uh, loading to the database, what is the actually in here? What is the problem of the map function is once it succeeds, it, it gives you the older result as a whole, but it fails it, it does not provide you the, any result. You only get the error. So you it it actually takes a lot of time if you just only simply using the then map function, try to combine or listing the older file. But the thing is uh, by using the possibly functions. You can check in those those error messages while while you can using the map fun, learning the map uh map functions. When you read the read Excel and then uh, if 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 there is a, some problem or something missing into the that database, it's gonna be the empty data outcome, right? And then no no data set and then uh, it it still allows you to combine allows you to the listing and then get the reading the dead Excel file anyways. Even if you have an error, you have a, some some data some data set with the problems. Okay. And then the next now now is the final chapter is the how you can save in the multiple outputs. So there is the three different cases you can do about the when we think about the multiple output uh, saving, like uh, if you have a multiple data frame with the one into the one database, or maybe you can think about the saving the multiple data frame into the multiple file, right? Or maybe multiple plot into the multiple, uh, multiple image files, like a PNG file or a JPEG file, et cetera. How you can do these kind of things. So in this case, uh, actually in here, it actually recommend you recommend us to using the this DBI packages and then a dot DB packages, and then we can try to connect to the these functions. And after that, we by using the dot DB read CSV function, we can try to, uh, try to reading the multiple file from the con. That's the how you can fill the data set. 
as a as a template. And then uh, whenever we have uh, this kind of a path kind of function to the read Excel, and then a template here is the 15.2 is uh, we can only get the, this kind of uh, outcome. Yeah. Uh, I'm not personally familiar with uh, these kind of DBI packages, but I actually, what I actually understand is the, when whenever we have uh, this create table by using the, these templates, it actually have a uh, have uh, some empty empty table with the uh, with the uh, this column name as a templates, and then and then it allows us to the whenever we we have a multiple file reading it, it actually fill the all of the these blanks based on the those files. So file A, file B, file C like this by using the appending appending the table functions here that's the what i understand about the of, about the dbi connect and dbi function dbi packages function too so take the uh take the this kind of a structure as a template and then whenever we have a file importing it by using the that db append the tables every every time we read the those Excel file, Excel file, that Excel file database is the is the added to the that temp that temp table templates one by one, like this. And then D is the next one, and then like this. Maybe in this case, maybe 19, maybe 75 or 1952, like this. So that's the how this one works. And then uh, this is the how we can try to saving our output, like uh, this kind of output as a single data frame. And then uh, another thing is uh, kind of like uh, saving the plots in here is also the same thing. Like uh, if we have uh, this uh, histogram functions, the plotting the this one and then uh, by query data one is uh creating the creating the that uh list of the that data set is the one by one in this case and then by using the math functions in here and then path is the just a state glue functions and then uh, this clarity as a as a file on uh, some of the uh, string format dot the png and then by using that one you can also using the this walk to functions and then uh, you can keep try to uh try to save in the this kind of uh, outcomes based on the whenever you have a multiple plus in here in here like a path and plot and then a gg save in here and then a width and height gonna be the uh defined and then a path and plot gonna be importing in here, like this. And then uh, that gonna be allow you to the automatically saving to the multiple plot as a multiple image files. So in this part is a little bit hard to understand, maybe without without doing that. But I hope that this one is the kind of a, also another way you can saving the plus and then the other work. Like this. Uh, I think that this is the end of the chapter twenty six. And then, uh, if you have any questions, any question, anything, any comments? No questions on my end. But thank you so much for the presentation. Oh, okay. Yeah, cause uh, this actually uh this chapter is uh, quite long, and then especially when you uh do the uh, uh do the have a uh, multiple file functions like a like a map function is the I think the very useful that we can use it rather than to using the dividing to the full loop. I think that that map 
that function is going to be the very useful when you have a multiple times series data data file as a separate separate files and you know when you have to think about the combining it those things together maybe you have to think about the, how you can use the map function to do that so that's the very useful function i think and then i think that we need to practice if you have one so that's the that's the end of the 20 uh chapter 26 and then i would let me type the end